All right, so here we go for some advanced CSS selectors. So I prepared a folder for you. If you want to follow along with me, you can find it in descriptions. And we are going to see some nice tips and tricks and some definition about uh, advanced CSS selectors because sometimes they can look scary. So actually the first one is really, really useful. It is the end selector, which is the comma. Okay, so imagine that you want to style those three headings. You just go there and say h1, h2, and h3, and background gold, for example, background gold. Okay, and it will just style them all. So it's really useful because you will not repeat some selector. You can just uh, do something like that. So just the end selector. So after that, you have the direct children. So we are going to see now the three most feared, I would say, selector, which is the uh, greater sign, the plus, and the tilde. The tilde, I think, yeah, the tilde. So the di direct children will be only the txt right there and not the txt right there. So I only want to style the direct children and not something that is nested uh, th that way, okay? So for example, I can just go there and say, um, wh what is the name of that container? superior sign dot txt bg crimson and you see that it will just style actually the the two all right uh, the two uh, txt right there and not this one all right because it's not a direct child a child of container okay it it's not so useful i'm not gonna lie but sometimes some sometimes you do want to use that kind of select selector Okay, next is the adjacent element. It's also not uh, widely used, but in some cases you do want to use it. So it's when you want to select one element that is after another one at the same level, at the same level, you need to really uh, memorize that. And so if I want to select presentation that is directly after descriptions, I will just go there and say description plus presentation and I will say something like BG chill and it will uh, it will style it like that okay so description is right there and presentation is right there and it's the di direct direct element you see the, the next no 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 the next adjacent element so if there are more than one element it will just select the first one the first next adjacent element. Okay, all right, so after that, we are going to see the tilde. I don't know if you call it like that. We don't call it like that uh, in French. Uh, actually, I don't really know the name of that, but I kind of think this is the tilde. So for example, you do have uh, multiple elements after one element, and you want to select them all instead of just one like that. You want to select all info, for example, after the main heading. So I would just go there and say main heading tilde, okay, and info bg, um, for example, something like, come on, come on, um, <laughs> dark salmon, <laughs> all right, dark salmon. And you see that those three spans, 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 those three info right there do have the background dark salmon. Okay, so this is the difference between plus and tilde right there. So again, it's not very, very used, but sometimes you do want to use those, great. So after that, we do have the attributes selector. So for example, you have one element uh, that will have an attribute type text. So for example, an input, input type text, okay? Okay, so I've put some br element right there just to uh, separate the different uh, inline elements. So for example, if I want to use that selector, I will write something like that, input, then the name of the attribute, type, and then the value of that attribute, text. Okay, and I can give something like firebrick. Okay, so you see that it's working for, for those inputs. Great. Okay, so after that, we do have the focus within pseudo class which is pretty handy when you are working with some forms and you want to create some animation or some interaction. 
All right, so, okay, so it says that when something is inside another thing and it has a focus, it will trigger that selector. Okay, so you can go, for example, there and write something like form, colon, focus within, BG black. Okay, so for example, I will just focus the input in th inside that form. Okay, so you can write something like the form like that. Okay, so the form is there. And if I focus, if I click on it, it will give the focus to the inputs. And then since there are some focus within the form, it will activate that selector. Okay. All right. And the last one is also pretty useful. This is the not selector, but it can be kind of tough and hard to use, but it can also be really, really useful. So for example, right there, the not uh, selector. So we do have one div parent and some child inside it. So what I can do is, for example, parent colon not colon nth child two. And I will give BG um, indigo, indigo. All right. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not that. It's the span. So lit letter right there. Letter not two. Okay. And this is what I want it to do. So yeah, you see that the second one does not have any background and uh, every other actually a letter do have a background. So this is really useful when you have a list of elements and you want to apply some style, but not on one element or not on multiple elements. If you want to do something like even, for example, it will just give the background to the, the odd element. You can also put odd right there. Okay. And yeah, this is not, and this is really useful. So you need to select one element and then you can just uh, say not to something inside it. Okay. And generally we are using NTH child, NTH child or uh, last of type or first of type or that kind of pseudo class to um, eject or to forbid some elements. Okay. Great, great, great. So that's it for some advanced CSS selector. Uh, this is not all. There are some other tips and tricks and some nice techniques with uh, the CSS selector. So maybe I will show you uh, those in another video. All right, like and subscribe and see you next time. Ciao.